So don't worry, those of you who've looked at your watch, I talk very fast. So here we go. We're going to talk about laws of boundaries. Can you imagine, if you haven't seen that movie, I'll enchant it. Basically, she is not allowed to say no to anyone. And so she goes through life and can't say no to anything anybody asks her. She has to do. Some of you are like that. Some of you have a hard time saying no to anyone. Others of you said yes to somebody you should have said no to, and now you say no to everyone. So this weekend, I put up a gate for my family. I put up a fence. I actually cut it down during the hurricane because FPL showed up and they said, oh, we can't get in your backyard with this fence here. We got to go get a different thing. I said, what about, he said, there's only three in the county. I said, give me a couple minutes. And we've got a sawzall. I cut that fence down, cut a tree down, dragged everything out of the way and said, and the guy came around the corner and went, oh. I said, you want to go? He said, well, we might leave ruts in your yard. I said, okay. Do donuts, figure eights in the back. I don't care. Just turn the power on. <laughs> turn the power on. So, so yesterday, so yesterday I got the fence back up. It's 30 foot of fence, and I put in gates. I don't know if you've ever done gates. That's the hardest part because it like goes really, really, really fast, and then gate. And I'm, I, you know, I'm, you know, the rabbit and the hare. The, the, the rabbit and the hare. That's my life right there. I don't even have a tortoise. There is no tortoise in my life. I'm rabbit and hare. Just two rabbits going okay but but you know the story of the to of the tortoise and the hare okay i don't like the tortoise time but we all have tortoise time so you know tortoise time is the gate so yesterday i hung the gate you know got it got it up so it's a little lock so it opens closes actually opens and closes which is good for a gate because if you build it wrong guess what it doesn't do it doesn't open and close but it looks good with the hardware but you can't actually and some of you have that at home where you're that's not, you didn't create a gate, okay? Just so you know, that's not a gate. Whatever that is, that's a, that's a wall you have to move if it doesn't actually swing, all right? By the way, that was really funny. I saw husband and wife look at each other like, you, I told you you need to fix that. I told you you need to fix that. That was funny. I could see there's like three or four couples that kind of went, I've been saying that for a year. Anyway, so, so now that I've created conflict in your home, um, so, so here's the deal. So you can open and close the gate. I got little dogs, little dogs, and they try to get out. So I can shut the gate, and they can't get out. And if I get sick of them, I can just open it and let them loose. And somebody will pick them up. They're cute enough, and they just poop everywhere. And uh, so, um, so little dogs, they don't, you know. Anyway, so what's the point of the gate? To, to let in what I want to let in and to not let in what I don't want to let in. You have gates in your life. This is what boundaries are. So you're allowed to say yes, and you're allowed to say no, and you can't blame anyone else, but there are laws of boundaries. And so what you say yes to, there are going to be consequences and results of that. And so if you don't in, uh, put the right things in place, there will be consequences. If you do put the right things in place, there will be rewards and blessings. And so last week we talked about uh, uh, five of these, and here they were, part one, we talked about sowing and reaping. The idea that you've got to go out of your way to be a blessing, and if you don't, you're not going to reap blessing. You're responsible for that. Number two, you're responsible for yourself but to other people, which means if somebody's mean to you, you can't say they made me be mean to them. Okay, You're responsible for your reaction. If that other person drives badly, it's not an excuse for me to drive, I mean for you, to drive badly. Just because that person's tailgating you, they did not make you hit your brakes, although it's hilarious. Watch their eyes just go... <gasps> You're like, yeah. Not that I've ever done that. Not that I've ever. Number three, power and powerlessness. You don't have power to change, but God has power to change you. Number four, receiving other boundaries. That's allowing other people to say no. And number five, we talked about motivation, which if you have good boundaries, you end up being motivated by love instead of guilt, instead of obligation, instead of feeling used. So then today we're going to do part two. We're going to talk about these different laws. The last five. The law of evaluation. Parents have done the law of evaluation for years. When I was a kid and we had vegetables of any kind, anything green. Broccoli. I don't want broccoli. What would your parents say? Think of children in China. I don't know why China, but think of children. And I, I offered to mail it, which shows you what kind of child I was. <laughs> So, so what, what, were, what was I being taught? I was, I was being taught, hey, listen, you think you're hurting. You're not really hurting. You think that's difficult. It is difficult, but it's not difficult like 
real difficulty. And so they were comparing to show me, hey, it's not that bad. So, or if you were walking somewhere, you know, your parents would say, you think that's far? And then they would tell you some story about how they walked farther. You know, at our school, we didn't even have books. You know, we used tablets and to carve with, you know, whatever. Now, let me give you the newest one. My 20-somethings are going to know this. You, anyone over 20-something will not know this unless they're very observant. But I have seen 20-something parents, and this is the new thing. So you can learn this. It's very effective. So their children say, I can't believe you made me blah, blah, blah. And they turn around and they go, but did you die? <laughs> so let me translate. Have you said that? Have you said that? I did say my 20 something are like, yeah, we, we actually say that at our house, right? Like, did you die, right? And, and, so, and so that's kind of the newest, instead of saying, you know, some kid in China, who they now can text, <laughs> you, 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 uh, hey, did you have broccoli for dinner? Because we just had broccoli for dinner. You did. I'm going to tell mom that you don't need broccoli. So now they say, did you die? Which means, you know, you need to push yourself. You need to have a little pain. You need to understand this thing. So Proverbs 15.5 says this, A fool spurns a parent's discipline. But whoever heeds correction, I'm going to talk about that word, shows prudence. In the Hebrew, this word heed correction is the idea of, of puts a hedge. And I don't know if you have a bougainvillea, but if you do, you understand hedge. I stepped on, I was helping somebody in their yard, I stepped on a bougainvillea thorn. You don't need shoes. You need metal bottom shoes. You need space boots. Bougainvillea should be illegal, but put them by windows because yep. there is no burglar coming in and out of your house. And if you have a teenager, they're not leaving. <laughs> if they start leaving, you'll hear, ow, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow. You got a problem with some teenage kid getting a ladder and putting it by your daughter's room? When I was a youth pastor, that happened to one of the parents. Bougainvillea, that kid will go, Wah! Awesome, you don't even have to mace him. It's great. All right, so stories I shouldn't tell you. So here's the deal. You guys know it's this idea that whoever whoever heeds instruction, it's the idea that listen, you listen to your authorities' advice, you listen to their correction, and it creates a safety barrier around you. If you don't, you're in danger. So so listen to your authority. Heed correction. I don't like correction. Do you? I don't like correction. I don't like anybody to correct me, but guess what? Did you die? <laughs> Remember this thing, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked and cures abuse. So listen to this. When you say no to somebody that you've been saying yes to, whether it's a child or an adult that you've been helping or somebody you've been doing something, when you finally say, you know what, I just can't do that anymore, they are going to freak out. So what you need to think in your head is, did you die? <laughs> because the truth about no pain, no gain is this. If your children never think that you're killing me, then you're probably not doing what they need. Because you've got to make them strong enough to have boundaries of their own. So if you're always controlling them, if you actually grab them physically, if you force them to do everything, you can force them outwardly to do things, but you cannot change their spirit. So you even have to give them the ability to say no to you and then reap the consequences of that no. Pain caused by your boundaries is a difference between hurt and harm. Just because someone is screaming at you doesn't mean something bad is happening. I can't believe you won't let me go to Halloween Horror Nights. I'm seven years old. I can't believe you won't let me drive the car. I'm ten. Oh, well, then I guess it's okay. Here you go. Well, I guess I'll let you go. Right? You don't just let your kids do whatever they want. They've got, if there's pain, that may be the best thing for them. Now, that's not harm. I'm not talking about hurting them. Okay? You're not, don't destroy them. But there's sometimes the pain is actually good. That's how they grow. 
You would think sometimes telling your child to clean up their room, right? They're going to die. Actually, some of the rooms I've seen, they might. Number seven, <laughs> proactive versus reactive. Let me just say this very simply. We are way, way too reactive in our society. Some of you have got to apply this to your Facebook replies. Because, can I tell you something? You could be scrolling through Facebook and see something you don't like. And let me teach you something. Ready? Keep going. You don't have to be Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that meme. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, I can't wait for time, I can't blame you. We are reacting, and you know why we are? Do you know how the media makes money? If they can get you afraid or angry, that's how they make money. Market, marketers have told me that. There's Christian groups who do this. They have to pretend there's three or four crises a year. Seven-year-old could not get balloon at fair because he was too short. I can't believe these people! Discriminating against these short kids. We were afraid he'd eat it. No, it doesn't matter! Give him a balloon! And we freak out over things that don't matter because we're reactive. We do it at home. That's why your parents, something happened and they said, you're grounded for life. life. That's reactive. Your kids know you're lying. <laughs> So listen to this. This is another way we do this. Whoever forgives someone's sin makes a friend, but gossiping about your sin breaks up friendships. You know what gossip is? Gossip is, I couldn't get you to do what I want you to do, so I'm going to tell somebody else about it to try to hurt you. You, wouldn't, you would not go inside of what I... I couldn't push you into what I wanted you to do, so I'm going to go tell somebody else to try to hurt you. By the way, these are just simple proverbs. There's so many... Listen... There's places in the Bible that you can read whole passages and learn, and then there's places where one sentence is like, <gasps> and Proverbs is like that. If you've never read Proverbs, take some time. You can read one a day, by the way. They're, they're in order. You can, there's like 31 of them, so you can go every day and just read one chapter. Mockers stir up a city, but the wise turn away anger. When's the last time you've turned away anger? Sometime when you felt like responding and reacting, and instead you thought, you know, that's not really that big of a deal. Proactive means freely choosing to love, enjoy, and serve one another. Reacting means letting someone else define and direct who we are and what we do. See, nobody can tell you how to feel or how to respond. You get to choose. So when you act angry towards somebody, guess whose fault it is? It's their fault. Yeah, that's right. All right, thanks for coming today. Number eight, the law of envy. This one's very easy, but it's, they said actually studies have proved that envy has increased. Do you know why? Facebook, because you see somebody else's best picture of their day, or they post only the good things that happened. Somebody yesterday posted, I just got new seven acres and five-bedroom house on Facebook. So I posted jerk. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> right? But it was funny. It's funny how many more people respond when somebody's sad than when they're happy. I find it interesting that, you know, 500 people say, I'm sorry about your dog. You got a house. Doofus, right? But I mean, you don't say that. You just you type it and you delete it, and then you don't type anything. Instead of going, that's awesome. Don't envy evil people. Don't be jealous of the wicked. An evil person has nothing to hope for. Do you have hope? If you're a Christian, you're going to get more than you ever deserve one day. What are you worried about? Your ceilings aren't tall enough. Your car's not nice enough. Some of you are whiners. That's right. <laughs> The wicked will die like a flame that is put out. That was perfect timing. Thank you. I'll send you your check later, baby. So listen to this. Seeing the good that we don't have. Comparison and envy make you unhappy with your blessings. You're like the little kid that goes to Disney World, and they're selling all that stuff in the middle of the street. Your parents just paid 500 bucks to get everybody in. They're walking down Main Street. They got that little balloon there that's going to last about an hour till you touch it. And you can't take it on any rides. And your parents say, no, you can't have it. And you go, ah! Wait. Okay. Uh, I was going. Hey, okay, your checks are reduced now. All right. <coughs> Just kidding. Right? So you're going in, and they freak out over that, not realizing all the blessings. Hey, what blessings do you have that you're not noticing because you're looking at somebody else? The righteous choose their friends carefully. Oh, wait, that's next. Sorry. The law of activity. Boundaries are created when we do something, not when we don't take action. Excuse me just a second. <coughs> A little wine made my throat hurt. All right. 
The righteous choose their friends carefully. Do you hear that? The word choose. If you don't have friends, guess whose fault it is? Are you really going out of your way? You can't drive into your driveway, push your garage, go in, run in the house, come get up the next morning and go out of your garage and think somehow you're going to meet your neighbors by some magic. I mean, you've got to stand by your mailbox and wait for them to come out. Just rush them. Hey, you know, you know how I know my neighbors? Because I had the most tap cons on the street in the last hurricane. And my neighbors came over and said, you got tap cons? We have concrete houses. You've got to have tap cons. And I'm like, yeah, I got a bunch of tap cons. You need tap cons? Yeah, we need tap cons. So you guys need help hanging your shutters? Yeah, we don't really have shutters. What? Yeah, we got a couple pieces of plywood, and I, he's got some uh, leftover uh, shed. <laughs> Whatever. So we spent the day putting up. So my neighbors still waved to me. Hey, how's it going? I'll be sending my dog over later to your front yard, but hey, it's good to see you. <laughs> hey, you take the good with the bad. Yeah. I'm actually carrying my stuff to their yard. <laughs> the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy don't roast any game. Some of you have never taught your kids to take care of themselves. They don't even know how to make a sandwich. You've made every sandwich. Teach your kids to at least make grilled cheese. My kids can all make grilled cheese. If my kids can make grilled cheese, let me tell you something. If they're, if they're over first grade, you should be able to at least teach them how to make a grilled cheese. Not by themselves. <laughs> the lazy don't roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. It's all about inertia. When I taught school, I got the principal to give me the keys to the bus. He probably shouldn't have. Put the kids behind the bus. I put the bus in neutral. Kids started pushing the bus. If you know anything about inertia, they could hardly get it going. Once they got it going, it got going. The kids were running. I was like, anybody want to stand in front? I was kidding. One kid said, oh, no. He's a pastor now. He really is. He really is. Because what I was saying is, once you get something going, it's hard to stop. But some of you haven't been going in a long time. Listen, if you're home and you're sad, can I tell you a secret? Get out. Literally get out. Sit on the front porch. Sit in your front yard. Go to Publix. Shopping is a pleasure. You know, go somewhere. Do something. But if you get used to just sitting still, guess what you're going to feel like doing? Sitting still. But if you get going, you're going to get going. And listen, I get up at 4.45 every morning to go to the gym. I get to the gym at 5.20-ish. When I get to the gym, let me tell you something. I am so not wanting to be there every single day. Every single day. I go in, I start lifting weights. Everybody's like, well, once you get there, then you're great. I'm like, no, no, I hate it. I hate it. I have a friend that's there. He's like, come on, we're good. I'm like, But he's a Marine, so I can't say that out loud. I just whisper it. And then I get on the treadmill, and I start running. It's horrible. I hate it. I hate it. Anthony Colucci goes to our church, comes, he sees me. He's like, wow, I never knew people could sweat that much. <laughs> Somebody went to Kristen the other day, and they said, did you know he sweated that much? Did you have any idea? Full disclosure, he does. All right. Things you didn't want to know? Was that too much? All right. We must take initiative and accept responsibility. Listen, do you know why some people don't have jobs? Because they don't work. I'm not saying that for everybody, but some people don't have jobs because they're lazy. You know, they get hired and then all of a sudden they're fired. I don't know what happened. Well, maybe if you actually, I don't know, did something. Number 10, the law of exposure. Internal boundaries need to be evident and communicated to others. If you're a teacher, any teachers in here, raise your hand if you're a teacher. There's not a single teacher. Oh, we got a teacher in the back. Okay, well, yeah, I see a couple teachers. All right, we're going to give you a hand. We appreciate our teachers. If you're a teacher, the first day of school, what do you do? You tell the kids your expectations. You say, if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, you will die. If you do this, right? This will be good. You know, I used to give out Kyle Cash when I taught school. So if the kids were good, they got Kyle Cash. They got so many Kyle Cash, they could chew gum in my class. They'd sit on the floor. I, I, did, I did all kinds of things. Let them do. Put their feet up on their friend's desk in front of them. They love that one, too. Aggravate their friend. It's great. But if they did wrong, they knew, hey, this is what's going to happen. A, B, C. Have you ever communicated your boundaries clearly? Give others a chance even to violate your boundaries. 
Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked and cures abuse. But do not rebuke a mocker or they'll hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. You know when you figure out if somebody's wise? When you correct them. Instruct the wise and they'll be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. You have to communicate your boundaries clearly and not assume that others know your feelings, your beliefs, or your desires. What if you really had no control? What if somebody told you something, you just had to do it? Exactly. <laughs> but you don't. But you don't. You have control. You can say yes and you can say no, but here's the deal. If you don't say yes to the right things, you won't be blessed. And if you don't say no to the wrong things, you're going to get burned out and exhausted. So open the door to the things you should. And yes, sometimes when you open the door, you get hurt. Love opens the door. Oh gosh, that's a song. It does, but you can get hurt when that happens. But if you never do it, you'll also never feel or experience love. In Revelation, Jesus said this, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and dine with them, have fellowship with them. If you're here today and you've never opened the door to Christ, You've never said, God, I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I surrender my life to you. I want to follow you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for rising again. I surrender my will to your will. I want to do what you want. That's what it means to become a Christian. You open the door to him and you say, I can't do this, but you can. God, I surrender to you. If you're here today and you're a Christian, the truth is you may have not been opening the, your door, the door of your life to the right things. You, you may have been hurt or burned down. I want to encourage you to say to God, God, help me to open the door to the things I'm supposed to do. And Father, help me to say no to the things I'm not supposed to do. And he will help you to do that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. I thank you for all the blessings in our lives. And Father, even the blessing of seeing one of our own go and lead a church in Apopka. Father, it's hard to say goodbye. And at the same time, we're excited to see how you're going to use it.